us for reflection. My name is Lisa Hoyland and I am serving as your Florida PTA Programs Chair. On this call, we have our Reflections Chair, Jenny Munn, and Committee Member, Karen Spangler. At this time, I'll turn the program over to Madam President Carolyn for further remarks. Thank you, Lisa. Welcome everyone to this week's edition to Road to Success, where we'll be discussing National PTA's premier program, Reflections, which is our fine arts program and covers all of our students across the nation. Uh, this year's theme, I am hopeful, and I am hopeful that all of you will get something special out of today's presentation. And I'm also hopeful that you're all registered for the legislative conference and for getting ready for leadership convention. But mostly, I am hopeful that our membership continues to grow and to thrive based on the actions of all of the people on this call. Enjoy today's presentation. Join us tonight if you have additional questions or just feel like coming back and hanging out with us uh, and enjoy the rest of the PTA year. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, Jenny, I wanna turn it over to you. Introductions. Hi, um, thank you so much. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. All right. I need to do introductions of the EC and board of directors. Sorry, Jenny. All right. So I'm going to, uh, just as I always do, I'm going to call you in the order that I see you on my screen so that I don't miss anyone. Melanie Williams is our secretary. Thank you and welcome and special thanks to our programs committee for presenting this afternoon. Thank you, Melanie. You've already met Lisa Hoyland, who is our program's chair. Uh, Karen Mozola is vice president for educational development. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And I know you're here because you have a love of reflections. And thank you for your putting it on at your schools. We appreciate it. Thank you, Karen. Lawrence, Lawrence Claremont. I almost called you Clarence. There's a little Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate y'all for joining us today. Lawrence is our vice president for education, excuse me, for leadership development. Uh, next, we have Bert Miller, who is our vice president for regions and councils. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for being here um, for this awesome national PTA program that they do. So thank you. Uh, I'm looking for EC members. I think that's all that I have for right now. So I'm going to go to our board of directors. And we have a lot of people on today. I see Kay mm -hmm. Hawkins, who is one of our region representatives. Hi, everyone. Belita Tut, our education chair. Good afternoon. Melanie Gamble, our media and marketing chair. Good, good morning, everyone. Great to see everybody. It's morning where Melanie is. <laughs> Tiffany Graham, our County Council President from Duval. Good afternoon. Thank you. Wendy King, our membership chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Kelly Cumbreaker, our Orange County Council President. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. All right, next page, because we got a bunch of people. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I think that is all of our board of directors. I'd also like to introduce our staff members who have joined us today. Uh, we have Jean Hovey, our interim office manager. Jean's waving at everybody. <laughs> we have Susan who does all of our communications. And if you get a newsletter, uh, that beautiful item comes from Susan. Say hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> And we have Heather Tisco, who is our, she's clapping, our membership person in the state office. And I think I've covered all of our EC board of directors and staff members. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. And thanks for that reminder, Melanie. Yes, ma'am. Jenny, now it's your turn, Jenny. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Reflections. Um, we're super excited for this year, and we're hoping that we get a lot of participation for this program. 
And um, before we go into it, I um, just wanted to mention our theme for this year is I am hopeful because you can see it right on here on my screen. And, and if I may ask for everyone to hold their questions till the end, and we'll also have um, Ms. Bangler monitoring our chat room throughout the presentation. So we will get to the questions towards the end. And to start off our program, um, I want to state our PTA's mission to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. And I must say our program pretty much encompasses the mission and it's a great way to, um, um, to carry out our mission. And so for our National PTA Reflections Program, just some four fun facts about Reflections. Um, it was founded in 1969, known as our oldest and largest national student recognition program in the arts. The program encourages children to reflect on a common theme and create original artwork and literature, visual and performing arts. Each year, PTA engages over 300,000 students and their families in arts education. And of course, Reflections is a major program that encourages that. Participation in art programs like PTA Reflection plays a critical role in student success by leveling play fields and developing students holistically. And moreover, the PTA Reflections has been a valuable tool for strengthening school and community partnerships. And in the next following slides, we'll go into a lot more details. And this is just an overview for local and council reflections chair and their um, duties. The PTA Reflections program is now offered via a digital platform. The general tasks for local unit and county um, council reflections leaders include, but not limited to, registering your PTA's participation in this year's program with National PTA, and hoping everyone did that, um, distribute program materials, and recruit volunteer judges um, earlier the better. Collect entries of our students' artwork, coordinate judging, advanced top entries to the next level of judging, celebrate and recognize students. And once again, this is just a quick overview and we'll go into more details in the following slides. And before we do that, um, this is a big part of reflections that kind of gets overseen um, every year. So I wanna really make a point to point out the National PTA Reflections Theme Search Contest. It inspires hundreds of thousands of student artists each year um, essentially, the Reflections program theme is chosen each year for, uh, from hundreds of suggestions submitted by students all across the country. Students at schools with a PT in Florida, even if the PT does not participate in Reflections, can submit their suggested themes. Submit themes to uh, Florida PTA by November 1st. Um, the Reflections committee then selects the top five entries in advance to um, the national PTA by December. And one national winner is selected by National PT in February, and that winning student receives a $100 award and national recognition. The entry form for this theme search contest is on our Florida PTA Reflections page. You can also find it on the National PTA page. It's a very simple form, so I really highly encourage you to promote this at your schools and to any students that may be part of a Florida school. It's super easy and simple to submit. And this year's theme is, I am hopeful because. And I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. <laughs> It'll be a pop quiz later. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna get into some important schedule and deadlines for our 2023-2024 Reflections program. So it kind of gives you an overlay of um, whether you're local, county, or state level. Um, local units need to start their reflections programs in September in order to stay in sync with the deadlines required for the various levels of judging. Now, this is, you know, this is a suggestion, but um, if you have a school that hasn't started yet, it's not too late um, for local units. So set your submission deadlines in keeping with your county councils or your region reps deadline. So it's a quick little sample underneath it. Mid-October to mid-November, we're reviewing entries and completing local judging. By mid-November, deadline to advance your winning entries to the next level, whether that is a county or a region. Units in council advance to county council reflection chairs and units not in a council advance to region reflections chairs. And for county councils, by mid-December to mid-January, county and region judging should be completed. And by January 12th, 
2024 reflections is due to state PTA, which is us through the national PTA student entry portal. Um, we are foregoing the, um, the other means that we used last year, the Dropbox and using our national PTA student entry portal this year. And for the state PTA by March 1st, um, we the entries that won at state level will be advanced to the national PTA portal. And by early March, state winners will be announced and invited to the state ceremony with a slotted date of May 4th for the state ceremony and details are to be determined. And for National PTA, by May 1st, National PTA Reflections winners are announced all across the board on their website, social media, and they um, communicate it to the state PTA as well. Now for step one for our um, Reflections chairs. So register, connect, and recruit. Register your PTA with National PTA Reflections Program. It's found on their website, um, pta.org under Reflections. This is essential. Um, we would be pretty sad to see that if you haven't registered, they do have a deadline that extends all the way to February. So you have ample enough time to do it. Um, we just wanna make sure that everybody's on that list before any students advance. Make sure your PTA is registered as participating in reflections with the state office. Visit the reflections page on the Florida PTA website to get all the details for our program. That includes um, this year, all of the forms and guidelines and instructions are all fillable formats. So you can go ahead and go on to our website. It's all on there. Kick off your program by celebrating. Um, and again, this is just an ex example of how you can celebrate National Arts and Humanity Months. Oops. Um, um, you can celebrate it in different ways, um, you, whatever works for your school. And then, of course, the recruiting volunteers, your reflections committee and delegating tasks, such as prom promoting the program, coordinating the judging, and of course, hosting a celebration event for all of our students. For step two, customize and distribute. Um, this will um, change for everyone depending on where your school is, if you're county, council, um, whichever level you may be. So you decide how you want to accept your entries. Dance, music, and film are always digital files. So I know we are all uh, moving away from paper formats. So um, for the most part, I believe all of our categories, if not actually all of our categories are available as a digital file. Um, edit program materials to include available art categories for participation. Um, for that, I just want to go into details. Um, you are not required to offer all six categories. So at this point, you can customize your um, entries that you, uh, the applications that you give out to your families to just include visual arts, for example, if that's um, the only category you'd like to offer for your school. So just keep that in mind when you're customizing your uh, customizing your um, forms for your families. Um, program deadlines, again, this is um, unique to every school. So make sure you include that into your materials. Directions for submitting entries. This is also important because it depends on whether you're doing your entry submission digitally or in person. So please make sure to clearly indicate that onto the forms before distributing. And for distribution to program participants, student entry forms can be an online Google form, um, or paper form. And again, National PTA has made it very easy for us this year by providing all of the forms as a fillable digital form. And of course, the rules and instructions that go along with the program. And of course, on the side, um, you can include additional details in the student materials, such as contact information, submission instructions, and additional rules for student eligibility. And we'll visually show you the form um, in the next couple of slides. And there it is, um, the entry form. This is probably the most important form that um, must be submitted along with the artwork. So local units must be in compliance in order to participate in reflections. So please make sure to um, check that you are in compliance. Local on the top part, the first arrow, local unit reflections chairs must complete all fields in the PTA box and ideally before copying. So that little gray box on the top is for the reflections chairs to complete and not the student or the parents. So um, it would be best practice to have that filled out before you distribute your material. Following that right underneath is the student information. Um, it's just the basic contact information. And if you do get this form, um, if 
we may ask that you double check that information before advancing it to the next level um, and make sure all the information is uh, legible and also accurate. Following that is the student and parent signatures. This is a required portion and electronic signatures are allowed. Um, and then the category in the div, uh, grade division. This is the part that I mentioned in the previous slide where you may edit. Um, again, all of this comes as an editable, fillable file. So you can go ahead and delete certain categories that you may not be offering um, at your school. And if you're particularly out of school, you know, if you're elementary, you are welcome to, you know, um, edit out the middle high school uh, section since you're only going to be primarily you know, pre-K to five. But we do ask that you keep the special artist division on there at all times. The next portion is a title, which is required along with the details of submission. And we get a lot of questions about the detail section here. Um, it is in the guidelines, but I do want to point out um, some Notations you would make under details would be if it's literature, you would have your word count there. If you're using music that um, you would cite where your music is from for dance category or the film um, production section as well. And then the last part is the artist statement. And this is required. And we do require that the student um, complete this section. For step three, coordinating judging. Um, at this point, we're at towards the end of October. So if you have your program going, um, this is a part where you know we would be heavily active in this step three. So tap into your community around you when you're recruiting judges and consider the following potential community members, such as administrators, local art professionals, like perhaps art teachers at your school or your surrounding schools, artists or art business people um, that will have connections to perhaps celebrity um, judges you may have um, connections to, former judges and reflections advocates, students and art professors from local colleges and universities are fabulous judge candidates, former state level reflections winners, as well as recent graduates. So essentially, you can utilize a lot of your community members around you, but we do ask that in line of keeping with best practice to perhaps avoid using parents that might have students that have submitted entries or teachers at your school that will know by just looking at per, like a dance submission that who the student is or per, avoiding any other members that might be able to identify um, the students that enter into whichever category it may be. Art categories and grade division overview. And this is just a quick overview. Um, we will go into detail per category, but we do offer six categories, dance choreography, film production, literature, music composition, photography, and visual arts. And the grade divisions are primary, which is K through pre-K through grade two, intermediate is grade three to five, middle is grade six to eight, and high school is grade nine to 12. Some key points is that all entries must be an original creation done by a student, single student for this year's Reflections theme. For photo and film entries, students can be in the entry only if a timer or a tripod was used. And going into each category in detail, first we have our dance choreography. Solo and ensemble works of all dance styles are accepted and Trent must be the chore choreographer and may also be the performer or one of the performers. If background music is used, please cite it on the entry form. And uh, for the video, file must not exceed five minutes and 1000 MB in size and accepted formats are AVI and MP4. For film production, accepted short film styles include animation, narrative, documentary, experimental, or media presentation. All screenwriting, directing, yeah. oh, I'm so sorry about that. Oh. I'm so sorry about that. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> we can, yes. 
That was my cat. Um, she just knocked over my computer. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so back to film production. <laughs> Accepted short film styles include animation, narrative, documentary, experimental, or media presentation. All screenwriting, directing, and editing must be done by the student producer. Um, if background music is used, please cite it on the entry form. And for the video, it must not exceed five minutes. File must not exceed 1,000 MB in size. Accepted formats are AVI and MP4, and use of PowerPoint is prohibited. Um, I do want to point out the PowerPoint part because we do get a lot of this. Please make sure that you double check your film entries that it is not a PowerPoint presentation. And for literature, accepted forms of fiction and nonfiction include prose, poetry, reflective essay, screenplay and play script narrative and short story. Entrants may write in their primary language if an interpretive English translation is also attached. Use of copyrighted material is prohibited. And the writing must not exceed 2000 words. And this is a part that earlier I mentioned in the entry form under detail to include the word count. Um, this will help as it advances into the next level. Uh, must include word count on the application form under the detail section, may be handwritten or typed, single-sided print on four and a half, eight and a half by 11 paper and in PDF file. For music composition, all music styles and combinations of instrument, instrumentation are accepted. Entrant must be the composer and may also be the performer or one of the performers. Use of copyrighted material is prohibited. For the audio, file must not exceed five minutes and 1000 MB in size. Accepted file formats are MP3 and WAV, WAV. And for the notation section, again, one of our most asked questions, it's only required for middle and high school divisions. Just wanna point that out. And in place of a notated score, a written reflective statement that provides a musically technical explanation of how the piece was composed is also required, 100 words or less, and the notation in a PDF format file. For our photography category, photos must be a single print and digital image. Collages and collections of photos are not accepted. Entrant must be the photographer or may use a variety of digital editing techniques, including, but not limited to multiple ex exposure, negative sandwich or photogram. For the print must be no smaller than five by seven and no larger than eight by 10 and mounted on a mat or a poster board, no larger than 11 by 14. Framed prints are not accepted and it include one digital image of artwork with your submission and the accepted File format for that is uh, JPEG, JPG, and PNG. And for the digital image, dimensions must be at least 640 by 960 pixels and 300 DPI. And the accepted file format is JPEG, JPG, and PNG. Bit of a tongue twister there. And for our most popular category, our visual arts, works of both fine and design arts are accepted, including but not limited to architectural drawing and models, ceramics, collage, computer generated images and graphics, crafts, drawing, fashion clothes and jewelry, fiber work, mixed media, painting, printmaking, and sculptures. And for 2D artworks, there are a couple of um, notations. It must be mounted on a sturdy material, no larger than 12 by 16 with the matting included. Frame entries are not accepted and include one digital image of the artwork with your submission and the file format is JPEG, JPG, and PNG. For 3D artworks, no larger than 12 by 12 by 12. And please include three digital images of the artwork at different angles. And again, the accepted file format is JPEG, JPG, and the PNG. And for our special artist division, so this essentially includes students who identify as having a disability and receive services under IDEA, ADA, or have an IEP, Section 504. 
four may enter in the special artist division or the grade division that most closely align to their functional abilities. So this special artist division welcomes all students from all grades and offers non-artistic accommodations for students to participate fully in the PTA Reflections program. And those accommodations um, include the following, non-artistic accommodations, for example, adaptive technology, transcribing or hol holding the camera for the student. And the assistants must refrain from being involved in the artistic process. An example of that would be perhaps helping them in the developing an artist statement or the choreography, the music lyrics, storyboards, and so on. And for our final step, this is my favorite step, <laughs> step four in advancing and celebrating your students. Um, this includes assigning awards by art categories and grade divisions. And uh, for the awards, nothing, there is no requirement or a set guideline. And again, we encourage you to utilize or use any kinds of awards such as ribbons and trophies. And you can find a lot of this on shoppta.com. Advanced finalists to the next level according to the state PTA guidelines and deadlines. And just as a reminder, our Florida PTA um, deadline is January 12th of 2024. Counties are to send their top three entries in each category and division to state. And the celebrate your student section. So announcing winners on your school websites and social media and utilizing the three tags that are listed on there um, at National PTA, at Florida PTA, and at Florida PTA Reflections. Offering awards from shoppta.com and donated prizes from community supporters. I know a lot of um, Reflections chairs get extremely creative, so we highly encourage you to utilize any items that may perhaps be donated. And Shop PT, again, has an excellent um, selection of ribbons and trophies and certificates that you can um, purchase. Host a student recognition event for families, and at this point, you can hold a gallery so everyone can come and view all the artworks, and you can also do your award ceremony at that point and showcase student works at school or in the community. And I'm just gonna use our um, county council as an example. We plan on displaying everyone's artwork at our um, nearby uh, mall that we have in our um, city. So it's a great way, everybody gets to visit it. It's um, put up for about a week long. It's it's a great, great event and it really helps promote the event and it's it brings and draws in a huge crowd. So you can utilize whatever that may work for your community. And don't forget to wrap up. So this is the last portion of it and make sure to thank your students, parent leaders, school personnel, judges, community businesses for their support and return non-advancing physical artworks and contact students for advancing in the competition. Um, if you are doing in-person intake for your submissions, please remember to return the artwork to the students that work so hard at it and make sure that that gets back to them in a timely manner. Um, host a debrief with your volunteers committee and see what worked, what didn't work, what you could do better and save all that information for the following year. Record notes and context for the next year's Reflections Chair. This just helps to, you know, make your program better and better each year and making notating what um, all the pros and cons are an important part of the committee. And just want to do a big shout out and um, congratulations to our last year's national PTA winners. And as you can see on your screen, we had quite a few. Um, we had an award of excellence winner, Arna Patel from Orange County, which is absolutely amazing. It was it was great. It was all, a, a phenomenal. She did a dance choreography. And then, of course, our award of merit winners, Alexander Willis from Duval County, Cecilia Rice from Seminole County, Haven Parker from Escambia. County, um, Samhitha uh, Rajeshkar from Duval County, and Annalise Boomberg from Orange County. And again, huge shout out to them. Amazing. And they made it all the way to national and won those different categories. And at this point, I want to um, ask Ms. Spangler, were there any questions in the chat that we may be able to answer? There were no additional questions in the chat. Okay. Um, if anybody has any questions um, that may have come up, um, please let us know. This would be the perfect time to go through any questions you may have. 
Uh, hi, this is Cornelia. Hi. Okay. So, um, wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Um, my question is, um, I was looking at the Florida PTA forms and I noticed that there was a Spanish version of the form. So would they need a English tr translation if they fill out the Spanish in if they fill out the form in Spanish. Yes, as um, one of the notations we had on, in one of the slides is that yes, they can fill it out in Spanish, but they would have to get that translated into an English, um, English using whatever resources they may have. Okay. Thank you. I noticed a question. I'm sorry, Ms. Langer. I, it just popped up on my screen. Can students enter multiple categories? Absolutely, they can. Um, you know, if you have a student that wants to enter in each category, absolutely, they are allowed. Jenny, going back to Cornelia's question and your response, is the burden on the student or the parent to have that translated? It is. Uh, the burden is on the parent, the guardian. Okay. Thank you. Cornelia, you have another question? Yes, I do. Um, I had seen on the Sunshine State website that they would have some kind of reflections program, but I cannot find any information on it. Could you help me out? Um, yes, we, oh, Ms. Williams. No, go ahead, Jen. Okay. Um, we can send you their, um, Sunshine State has an email. Unfortunately, I don't have it uh, readily yeah. available. If anybody knows their email address, they have a general email. And if you email them, they'll send you all the information for, um, for Sunshine. Yeah. We'll drop it in the chat in a minute, Cornelia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I do see a question about submitting an entry to reflections if your PTA or PTSA at your school does not participate. Um, so there are several options. Um, one that comes from national PTA is that you reach out to other local closest nearby PTAs in your community. So if you have an, if you're, I'm not sure if it's elementary or middle, you can reach out to your grade division. Grade, like if it's elementary, you'd reach out to an elementary PTA and see if they will accept your entry. Um, or if it's middle and high school, so on and so forth. Otherwise, if you're unable to find anyone, you can absolutely send us an email, reflections at floridapta.org, and I can find you a PTA that will accept your entry form for you. And if that does not work out, you can also submit to Sunshine State as well. I hope that answered your question. Melanie Gamble, you have a question? Yes, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, I've not ever actually handled reflections before and um, been working with a couple of PTAs I'm involved with. And so the question's been on the form. Um, it has a question that we're supposed to fill out that says region, but it also says district. Do we fill out both of those sections? So um, for that question, it depends like for the district, I know that you do have to, for the district section, we've been told to fill it out as the county. I, is there, a, I believe there's a county as well too. So it depends on where yeah. you're at. If you have a region, then you would fill that out. But um, if you're unsure, you can send it over to us via email and I can take a look at it and I can look up and see what would apply to your area. Yeah, it has um county, then region, and then district. And so we just kind of just decided to put the county both places, I suppose, but I was just <laughs> asking for what the real answer was, um, yeah. or could it be left blank? I, I wasn't sure. So for the region part, okay. I know at least in our area, we don't have one, so we leave it blank. So if you're unsure, just send us an email and I can take a look at it because I'm not quite sure where you're located. So I can look that up for you. I'm Again, sorry, I'm in a Scambia. So I know the region, it's region one or west. And so I just, it was a question about the district input because it seemed like it was redundant. Um, so, and the other question I had was, you mentioned register with the state. So we fill out the registration for national. Is there a separate registration for state? 
There was a form that we did um, post and send out. Um, it is for the reflections chairs for the county councils so that we can communicate instructions for entry submissions. Um, so we can send that out again. Um, and it's a separate form from the national PTA, yes. So registration for the state is for the county council reflections chair. Correct, correct. Not the local unit reflections chair. Correct. The local right, units thanks. only have to register with national PTA. Thank you. Absolutely. Are there any other questions? Um, Jenny, there was a question um, concerning, uh, you answered the question concerning multiple categories from a student, but uh -huh. there's a question, can a student enter more than one submission in a category? So we are doing one entry per category. So one student can submit one in visual arts, one in photography, one in music, one in film, and in each category. So one submission per category. Hope that answered the question. There's also a question about recommendations for garnering multiple submissions when you're launching the per program for the first time. Um, and can you specify what do you mean by garnering? Are we are, like, are we encouraging or is that what the question is? I'm not quite clear on that question. It's Adrian, and um, I would invite you to take Adrian off mute or ask her to come off mute and specify what her question is. Okay. Miss Adrian, I'm, I'm flipping through the page. Oh, there we go. If you want to go into detail about the question, um, I'd be more than happy to answer. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, at our school, we're in our second year of running this program, um, but so far we're having really um, low interest in the program in, in terms of what actually translates to entries. So last year we had about a dozen. Um, this year we had much more expressed interest, but then we only had six missions by the deadline. So I was just curious for others who are on this meeting, um, if you had any best practices to share about like, how did you grow interest in this program? Um, especially at a school, maybe with a parent population that's not familiar with what Reflections is. That's a great question. And this is one we get quite a bit. Um, I'll just start off by giving you examples of what I have done in the past with our local units. So we utilize our teachers quite a bit um, at our school, our art teachers specifically. And we've also expanded to utilizing our ELA teachers to help with the literature section of it. But really getting the staff involved is a huge, huge part of being able to promote this more and more widely. We also do certain things like announce it on the morning show every day for about a month. <laughs> um, that gets the students to, you know, actually think about it and say, okay, you know, get their interest going. Lots of social media presence, sharing on websites, distribution of flyers uh, multiple times. We even do car line. We host an event where they can come and brainstorm ideas for the theme where we do it all as a group. Um you know, anything that's visible, loud, and they can hear about it and doing it repetitively is, I think, the key and being consistent with it. Um, you can even do an art board or an art wall at your school where students can just walk by. We have like a Sharpie attached to our board where they can walk by and just write whatever they want that pertains to the theme. Um, any kind of, you know, extra activity that you can um, go along with it rather than just saying, hey, we offer reflections and here it's the entry form. You can do all those additional, you know, promotions. And nowadays, everybody seems to be heavily involved in social media. So I would definitely take advantage of that. Um, you know, getting creative. We do live streams. We create funny videos that gets everybody's attention and so on and so forth. If and anybody, Jenny, just to add to that, as Susan mentioned in the chat, if you partner with your art teacher, your music teacher in high school, you can do dance clubs and photo photography clubs and all of that. Partner with your schools. Kids will take it from their teachers more than they'll take it from PTA. And if you can get the teachers to help promote it, it would yield some results. Thank you. Thank you all very much. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have any other questions?
So the email address for Sunshine State was shared in the chat. Thank you, Karen Mazzola. Um, we can pull that from the chat and I think we're good um, with any more, no more questions in the chat. Okay. It's not a question, but it's a comment mm -hmm. from Susan. Sometimes the art teacher or another teacher, such as a language arts teacher, will incorporate an entry into a lesson plan that helps to get more entries. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I just said. As well. um, I um, see a quick question that just popped up. Um, is it the requirement for four to six judges? Um, for the judging um, count and how many you have, there isn't a set number that's required. But what the suggestion is about four to six, and you are correct, around four to six, um, the more the merrier, the more you can get and more people that you can get involved is, um, of course, would be great. But again, with the limited time or limited resources and so on, um, four to six is kind of the magic average number. Mm -hmm. Will there be more information coming about the national portal entry process? Absolutely. Um, that will be shared with our county council chairs. Um, it is the same national PT portal they've had for the last several years. They have updated it. Um, they It is a very simple platform and we're going to be utilizing it due to the fact that it is so user-friendly. Um, some counties already have an account, some do not. So if you don't, it's super easy to create one and we will share that information. And I did see there was another question. How do we know if we're registered? That was another question. Yes. Um, that national PTA on their reflections page actually has a direct link that you can go in and check. Um, it's a public link. It's for everyone to utilize. And it's, it's, listed in the middle of a really big wordy paragraph. So a lot of people don't notice it, but it's highlighted in red and it's notated as the running list. So if you click on that um, running list, the red words, it'll take you directly to their registration list, which is quite large. Um, you can filter it out. They have an option where you can filter it just for Florida. And again, this is public link. Everyone and um, is allowed to go into it and see it on that page. Um, we will, if you send me an email, I can even send you the direct link. So at reflections at floridapta.org, um, or otherwise you can go into, um, pta.org under reflections and find the running list. Okay, Jasmine, you got it. Thank you. Oh. And Sharon, um, Susan stated that the county due dates are listed on the website. So. And I just want to point out one thing and another one, another very popular question we get is, is there a confirmation email that gets sent out once you um, register with National PTA? No, there is not. Um, they state it right on their website that they will not be sending out a confirmation email. Therefore, right underneath it is why they have that link public for everyone to see so that you can go in there and double check. And you'll mm -hmm. notice that a lot of schools have registered it many, many times because of the fact that the red confirmation email does not come out. Any further questions at this time? Okay, so I hope that was helpful and I hope we were able to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and if ever in doubt and you need a quick answer, a quick question answer, please, please email us at reflections at floridapta.org. Um, and otherwise, thank you again for holding the Reflections program at your school and helping us um, promote the program. And at this time, if I may, um, let me just double check. If I may turn this back over to uh, Madam President, Ms. Carolyn. Thank you. I'm not the president, but I'm going to say oh. thank you, Jenny. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're <laughs> fine. You're Back to Ms. Williams.
We got you. <laughs> but thank you so much for the presentation, uh, Jenny Mun, our Reflections Chair. Awesome presentation. And Lisa Hoyland, our Programs Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, just a few reminders. Um, join us again tonight at 7. You should have that link. We'll be repeating the same presentation. And next week, I'm not sure what we'll have next week for Road to Success, if one of our members could remind me. Um, you're muted, Karen, if you're saying it. But next week is Karen's show. Yes, it's the Education <laughs> Commission. We'll be talking about uh, career development. Excellent, Thanks. excellent. And LegCon, Florida PTA Legislative Conference, is open. Registration is open, so please check your emails. The dates are January 28th through 30th, um, so make sure you register to attend. And, of course, stay tuned for more information on leadership conventions. Um, also, today we got the email for nominations are open for Florida PTA um, elected officers position. So check your emails. If you're not getting emails from Florida PTA, check the website or email us and we'll make sure you get on the mailing list. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and see you again at seven or next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.